There are things that we really had no idea are caused by having ADHD that neurotypical people don't often deal with. So much of the time, someone who's neurotypical doesn't understand how hard it is for us to do certain basic things. You want to hear a perfect example of that? Mm -hmm. If I forget my keys, literally, I'm about to go start the car. I need the stupid keys. I have a hook. I level right there as I walk out the door. But it took like years <laughs> of practice to literally put my key there. And I, 98% of the time, mm. I do hang up my keys now, but it's like. Well, every I once in a while, because you walk in and you've got groceries in your hand and the, the keys in my pocket. So then it gets set on the table or. And then it's hours of looking for where they could possibly be because they're not on the hook. Great. Like, it's not like. They're gone, you know, they're gone. Gosh, who knows how many hours of my life I spent looking yeah. for my keys. Welcome to the I Didn't Know What the Fuck I Was Doing podcast. We're your hosts, Teresa and David. This is the podcast with two ADHD entrepreneurs who've made a lot of mistakes. Each week, we discuss ways to navigate business, relationships, and health. We also interview excellent guests who share their own personal IDK WTF stories. Listen today so you can hear some relatable content as we normalize uncertainty and obstacles. Because it's important to admit that no one really knows what the fuck they're doing. Welcome back, everybody, to part two of our episode. Uh, neurodivergence. What, 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 what? Welcome back. We just talked about the whole neurodivergence movement. We did. Yes. Neurodivergent. And now for the second half of this episode, we want to talk about coping strategies and stuff that we had no idea was a coping strategy because we just did those things to live. <laughs> to get through life. Yeah. Right. To get through our every day, to make every day work. And there are things that we really had no idea are caused by having ADHD and something that other people with ADHD also deal with that neurotypical people don't often deal with. Yeah. And that's something to kind of stress that so much of the time, someone who's neurotypical doesn't understand how hard it is for us to do certain basic things, like things that just seem so normal and so easy and just so straightforward. It's, mm -hmm. it's not for us. Well, you want to hear a perfect example of that? Mm -hmm. So on the last episode that we talked about neurodiversity in, I mentioned how I leave the house and I almost always forget one of like my three to four essential things that I bring with me everywhere. I almost always have to go back in to get one of those things. I'll bring all sorts of other stuff with me. But if I go in, if I forget my keys, literally I'm about to go start the car. I need the stupid keys. A lot of times I unlock it inside. Well, I have a hook. I level right there as I walk out the door. So most people would think, well, okay, but it's right there. So you have a hook like every other person so that they don't lose their keys. Right. Sure. Do you know how long it took me to train myself to hang my keys up there and not put them in my purse, put them in my pocket, set them down in my room or on the kitchen table or wherever else they just landed? So then I would spend how much time, gosh, who knows how many hours of my life I spent yeah. looking for my keys. And even there was a point where Dan told me, he's do not take my keys if you lose yours. <laughs> right. I didn't usually lose his because I was really paranoid and I didn't want him to be mad at me. Though I usually would hang the back It has so much more importance because they're his keys, right? When they're right. Yours. Well, even, even though they weren't like, he had his car, so he'd have, he has his car key and like office keys on one. And then he has our other vehicle keys on the other, this other one, but it also just hangs there. So then if he were to take my car, he has his key for my car whatever but so there are definitely times like when the kids were little that i'd be like i do not have time to look for my keys i got to pick up my kids from school so i'd take yeah. his keys but it took like years <laughs> of practice to literally put my key there and i 98 percent of the time yeah. i do hang up my keys now but it's like well, every I once in a while because you walk in and you've got groceries in your hand and the, the keys in my pocket or yeah, I have groceries and the keys, so then it gets set on the table or... 
And then it's like you said earlier, it's hours of looking for where they could possibly be because they're not on the hook. Great. It's like, not like they're gone, you know, they're gone. Yeah. Well, or even people who carry some sort of bag or purse or backpack or whatever, I have started hanging like my smaller purse that I tend to take everywhere with me that just easily I have my sunglasses in it, has my like card and my driver's license and some basic stuff in it all the time. Well, I hang it on a hook behind my door, mm -hmm. but I'm currently still training myself to do that. Yeah. And so I think people don't realize it's, oh, well, you have a place for it. And I would love to know neurotypical folks out there. What do you think about all day? Because I spend a lot of time thinking about where my stuff is, what I need to bring and like trying to organize my thoughts. And I think that was, I didn't realize that other people didn't all think like that and that nobody else had to struggle to create a habit so that they don't lose their stuff. And They're I don't stuff. Very right? important like, basic things that they use every day. <laughs> How do you guys not lose that? Doesn't even make sense. Right. And they're just going to say, well, we just put it in the same place all the time. But what about when you don't? Like, do you ever not? Is that you just don't not? Do you ever do not? And if you do not, are you able to quickly go, oh, yeah, I was using <laughs> that thing and I went to that room because I can do that this much of the time. Right. But usually it's, okay, when was the last time I saw it? And I have to go through this whole, like the whole, I'm like, what was I doing? And I literally sometimes will walk to a different part of the house and I'm like, I was holding this. And I was going to go here. And I remember that's when I had it. Yeah. What did I do with it? And sometimes it's right there. Mm -hmm. That's when I'm just lucky as hell. Right, right. Usually I took it and set it somewhere completely random. So what but are... my phone on top of the dryer. <laughs> <laughs> it's, the, it's the worst. Because it seems like, oh, I need to pull all this stuff out. Let me just set this here. Why did out. I even bring my phone with me when I was going to change out the laundry? It could have just sat where I was sitting, where if I, you know, and I could leave my phone for five minutes. No, instead I brought it with me and set it randomly on some shelf in my mudroom that I would never set it on. Why? Because mm -hmm. I needed both hands to get something out and I, whatever. There's always some reason, but then you're literally looking everywhere because you're like, I would never set something there. Yeah. Yes, you will. So losing things is a thing. What are some other coping strategies that you found? So you've got your hook. Yeah. You've got your backup key with totally. your partner that doesn't lose them. What are some other things in your life that you discovered were ADHD related? That was a coping mechanism you used to get around some of the ADHD habits. Well, so as I mentioned earlier in this episode, for me, I talk a lot. So not interrupting people and staying focused while they're talking, there are some times when I really struggle. Sometimes I'm better at it, but most of the time I have to actively think, okay, David is talking right now. Okay, listen to what David is saying. Nope, whatever you have to say is not important, Like, which I've had to train myself that whatever I have to say is not important more so than what David is saying or whoever I'm listening to in that moment. And if, if this thought is like bleeding or dying, emergent, super important, and it, oh my gosh, I really, really need to say this, but how often do you have a thought that's like an emergency thought? Mm -hmm. You don't. Not right. really. Like, it's very, very rare that it's something you would interrupt someone else to have this thought that you absolutely have to share. So it's like, nope, if the thought goes away, it's fine. But actively having to have that go on in my head. I thought other people did the same thing mm -hmm. where they're listening to someone else talk and they have to sit there and sometimes refocus themselves. Sure, maybe once, but literally sometimes I, I am like struggling and I'm like, listen to the person, listen to the person, listen to the person over <laughs> and over. And I have to then listen and keep myself. It becomes a very like split way to think. And yeah. I still need to like digest what they're saying and understand what they're saying and be able to have a conversation too. It's a lot. It's a lot of like. A lot of mental energy, right? Yep. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So what else? What other kind of things have, did you find were like coping mechanisms, coping strategies? Just well, I'm. The day to day. I mean, through all the personal growth that I've done, mm -hmm. it's, there were all sorts of things to fix all of my problems. You know, I've listened to every podcast, every book every TikTok, every whatever on decluttering, okay. 
you know, it's something that I deal with in my life. It's something that I struggle with. It's something that I prefer spaces to be cleared out and clean and tidy. Like I think better, I feel better in those spaces. And I think that's mostly universal. I don't know anybody who's, no, if I'm in a nice clean space, you know, with just a few things I want to look at or I want to be focused on, like most people are like, yeah, that's a good space to do something they want to focus on. But I have the hardest time creating that. So I have tried everything I could do to fix that. And if I had no idea that w- was related to ADHD. And I always just thought, I'm just a cluttery person, I guess. I yeah. <laughs> So it's like the things that I have in place to start dealing with my clutter or to organize things are all coping mechanisms to deal with the fact that I just, I lose stuff. So a lot of times, oh, I want this out of my desk so I can see it. I want this available so I can see, I don't want to forget this. So I'm going to write it on a piece of paper and set it right here Mm -hmm. so that next time I come over here. But if it stays there too long, it just becomes part of the scenery and fades into the background. So like, how do I keep changing that up? So it's visually different so that I'm like, oh, I still need to remember this. Okay. It used to be a piece of paper. Now it's a pink sticky. Okay. It was a pink sticky. Now I wrote it big on my whiteboard or it's like I have to rotate what I use. By yourself. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Right. Um, totally. Well, and I, I talked about in the other one, but it, it gets an honorable mention and should be mentioned everywhere. The amount of alarms I use for yeah. everything. And I mean, I just got a new phone yesterday. And last night when I got home and was still setting everything up, my other phone, I walked into the house and my other phone was sitting there like going off one of my reminders. And I was like, oh, I got to move all those alarms. Oh, no. Like, and and thankfully, I didn't miss anything because, you know, just a couple hours. But even still now, I have not updated all of my alarms and I need to do that or I will absolutely miss even just like putting the trash out. Mm-hmm. I think that's what that alarm was for. Anyway, it was like putting the trash out so that the next day. Otherwise, I pay for trash pickup. My trash pickup will never happen if I don't have an alarm to remind me to put it out on the proper day. Yeah. And that's an interesting one. Things that become, that are routine that happen all the time, every week. It's so like where a neurotypical person, it's just, well, yeah, it happens every week on it. On Sunday, on Wednesday, right? You just get out on whatever day. I don't know why it's so hard for as well as an object permanence issue, right? Where it's just, it's so normal that we don't even think about it. Well, object permanence and it's like you, you you always say you're like, time's irrelevant. Because time means nothing to me. Learning how to I think that's one other thing. I never know how long to give myself to do stuff and learning to do that also with kids when you're trying to like, oh, we're going to go to the zoo. No big deal if it's just me and the kids going to the zoo. But if I'm meeting someone Mm -hmm. and we're supposed to meet at 10 at the entrance of the zoo, Mm -hmm. how do I plan? Like how do, how long does it even take me? I actually have learned, this is a more recent one, but it's like play music while I'm like, doing my makeup. How many songs does it take me? So songs are, you know, relevant because sometimes some are a little shorter, some are a little longer, but approximately like three to four minutes per song Mm -hmm. on average. So it's okay. If this takes me about four songs to do this thing, music actually has helped me a lot because then I can throw music on and the songs actually help me keep relevant to time. Mm -hmm. But it, yeah. it's yeah, it's a coping it's a coping strategy of how yeah. to have a sense of time. And it's an engaging way, so it's not just like a timer that you're setting. Like, I want to listen to music. I'm going to listen to X yeah. amount of songs, and then it should be done. Yeah, that's perfect. Right. I should not like if I'm like, oh, I got to take a quick shower. I seriously will turn on music and be like, all right, you better have everything done by like a song or you know two songs max. By the yeah. end of that second song, you better be climbing out. <laughs> you got stuff to do. That's brilliant. That's so smart. Yeah, I love that. I haven't heard that before. So that's a good one. Well, good. I'm glad. I hope it helps somebody because it sure does help me with sense of time. But that doesn't work for like days running together when right. schedules aren't like set or schedules fluctuate, like entrepreneurial schedules. Mm-hmm. We don't have usually a set schedule. Right. We do. But some entrepreneurs like us aren't required to have any sort of set schedule. So, yeah. Which I think I've mentioned before, I don't know if it was here or somewhere else, but that's what I, one thing I love about our podcast is that we like set a schedule. We have days we're going to do X, Y, and Z, which then forces me to 
create more schedule in my life around other things. So yeah, I think you did say that yeah. with us before, but it's yeah. so relevant. And it for me too, it helps, especially normally I have the kids' schedules to help keep me. I know what day it is, but even now, Dan has been working like the last 11 days without a day off. So I have no sense of his schedule, which normally helps me, even though it's a weird schedule and the kids are on summer. So mm -hmm. I don't know. Is today Tuesday? Is it Monday? Is it Friday? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think now is probably a good time to take a little break. Perfect. Please listen to this little sponsored ad from your most amazing sponsors, David. The most amazing sponsors in the history of sponsors. This is a podcast for anyone looking to improve their personal, professional, or family life. We craft these episodes so you can learn from or relate to our experiences and opinions. And we'd love to hear more about you. So if you're interested in connecting with us further, as well as other like-minded individuals, we recommend checking out our creatively named Facebook group, Colorado Entrepreneurs. You don't have to be from Colorado or be an entrepreneur to join, but it doesn't hurt. Just go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Colorado biz, that's B-I-Z, and send us a join request. Or check the link in the description and show notes below. Thanks for listening. And now back to the show. So, anyway, so what about you? What coping strategies have you noticed were coping, but you didn't know they were coping? Yeah. So there, I mean, all of them, because again, even though I was diagnosed at a young age, I kind of completely disregarded it. So being late, has always been a big thing for me and I guess it still is. So I haven't really found a fix. Well, actually what I do is I set all my clocks forward. <laughs> so all of my clocks are like- I used to do that. I used to do that. It doesn't work for me anymore. It usually just, and it confuses my whole family, but <laughs> yeah. even, even in my car, setting the car, my car clock like five minutes fast, I actually found probably by speeding. <laughs> well. Especially but then I would show up somewhere and be like, car. I still have three minutes. Yeah. The car one has been the most impactful because it's out me lollygagging around the office. And then I get in my car and I'm driving. And I'm like, how is it so late already to go? But see, the problem is I always remember it. So people are like, how does that help? I'm like, because then I'm like, it's okay. Or the kids will be like, oh my gosh, the bell's ringing. And I'm like, nope, you still have four minutes. They're like, why is your uh, car? Different? I'm like, it's for me. Don't touch my car clock. Yeah. So what I do is I'll, when I, if I have to reset it, like daylight savings or whatever, I'll look away when I set the exact time and then just set it down so that I don't know exactly how fast it is. I do See, I can't do that because then I'd be anxious, about <laughs> but I love that that works for you. Yeah. So that one has been kind of the best for being late. I should set all the clocks in my house ahead five different minutes. Time. Just set them all different. Some six, or, some no, clocks. because the kids would go look at different. But if I set all of the clocks in the house just five minutes ahead, it would probably take anybody a long time to notice, and we'd leave five minutes early to everything. There you go, do it. <laughs> Might have to experiment. How to get the kids to leave on time? <laughs> okay, so you set your clocks ahead. What else do you do, David? So that one, the other big thing, like you you had mentioned before, is you've trained yourself to hang your key up. Mm -hmm. I, I have not been able to do that. I actually, I made one of my favorite things I ever made. It was at like a wine and crafting store, or like a shop, or whatever you could spend. Mm -hmm. It was like a magnetic key holder. And so it has magnets instead of a hook. So you just magnet. Key. Yeah. Cause your keys just stick. Well, yeah. In a certain keys right now, there. but. Yeah. But uh, so I, I still don't use it all the time. So I have to get the tile trackers on everything. I have them um, in like my keys. I actually have it on my, like some work stuff. I've got it in the bags. I can, I have it in my wallet because my wallet is always missing. I never know where my wallet is. And it's funny because I'll be out with someone I'm dating or a friend. I'll be like, I don't know where my wallet is. Like, oh my gosh, do you need to cancel your cards? I'm like, no, it'll, it'll turn up. No, it's in my stuff. I'm fair. Like I'm pretty certain it's not stolen. Yeah, it's, it's lost in my life in my house. or in a jacket or under a book on the or in a random kitchen drawer that I happen to have open and for some reason set my wallet there. But now with my handy dandy tile, I have one in there. I can just tap my phone 
and it'll call my wallet. And if I lose my phone, which I do all the time, I, and I have my wallet, <laughs> I can tap my wallet. Or if I have my keys and not my phone, I can get my phone back. So great. And if I have none of them, I can just say, Hey, Google, call my wallet and it'll call it for me as what? it's tied into the tracker. Yeah. Gosh. It's amazing. So much. Cause like you said, there's so much time spent searching for things. So much. Well, there are times when I'm not late. I'm so proud of myself because I'm like, hey, especially now with the music thing, I'm like, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Can't, <laughs> yeah. Like the other day, I couldn't find my driver's license <laughs> yeah. and my card. I had taken them and I, had, I was wearing like workout pants. So, and I was, I was driving though. And I was like, I don't want to take all my other stuff because we're not going to be in the car. I don't want to leave my purse in the car. Like I can just put my driver's license and my card in this pocket. Well, the thing is, is then I went, okay, it's in the pocket. I went to the pants that I had thrown in the laundry. It wasn't there. I took them out and it's no, I, but I spent like 15 minutes looking and I was late yesterday or the day before I was late. Yeah. Simply because I could not find my driver. I was like, I'm so sorry. I had to find my driver's license. Because that, yeah, I'll do that every so often. Probably when you go into the bars, you know, I'll just take out the ID, and the credit card. And then there's no wallet. So it's like, okay, I don't have my wallet. So let me just set it somewhere because I don't have it. But I'm definitely going to remember that I'm putting it right here in my this car. Super <laughs> special place that I will never forget I'll, ever. I'll never ever forget i'm remembering and then it's the next day and i have it's done that memory has never happened it never stored right? yeah but honestly those tile trackers and they come in all different sizes too and actually one thing i do i do a lot of pet city as well yeah um i put them on the cat collars that i'm pet sitting oh so, so if you can't because yeah if you're in like somebody's house and it sure if they have a smaller place fine but it's like the place you happen to be pet sitting now is a yeah. really cool big house yeah. but then you'd never be able to find the and cat cat. they're so quiet and so sneaky and they just like to go hide somewhere and sleep and it's very stressful and it's not my animal i'm like in not knowing where its hiding spots are so i like to go check on another so often right and so just hit the button find the cat so does it was, does cat. it bother the cats when the like sound goes off do they freak out it's not overly loud. It's like the 1980s watch evening, basically. So here's some of the other things that I do. And I, I think I've talked about it quite a bit more in another episode, so I'll go a little bit quicker, but just setting up different systems. And so automation is huge to me. So again, a big thing with ADHD is again, we forget to do those things that are routine. So like vacuuming, mopping, cleaning up, those are things that I often just don't think about doing like one thing I, I don't notice if a floor is clean or not clean. Like mm -hmm. I, when I, after I clean it, I'm like, man, that looks so much better, but I don't see the gradual increase of dirt and just messy carpet. So I've got a robot vacuum that goes off and sometimes during the summer actually goes off twice a day because it keeps spiders out of the house, which is super nice. And then a robot mop too, that just cleans everything and it goes and does its thing and comes back home. Amazing amazingly worth it and you can get them for pretty cheap it's like 79 dollars, i think if you get it on ebay for used yeah i just don't think the little robots could keep up with the amount of dirt and crap that because might because if it goes every day which again it forces me to keep my floor clean because i like personify the robot and his name is his name is hashtag so he's like my little my little buddy so i want to make sure that if everything's clean he's not going to eat something and get like all stuff so it like forces me to keep keep things clean but i love all your named robots <laughs> and then like you have the little ones that are like here somewhere i don't know where you put them but there. yeah they're, they're so cute your little um, robot buddy i can't have real pets so i just have animatronic ones <laughs> so I got you it. name all of them and they're fun what is it like vector vector's the best vector and his brother is cosmo so oh, yeah. Hot. brother cosmo the younger brother zima is my mop so he's named after Azima Blue, which was a, a show on Netflix. I was just going to say, I'm like, Zima was also, well, still it is an alcoholic yeah. beverage. It's like <laughs> cheap alcohol. Yeah. Hashtag Google vacuum. I'm trying to think, I think I have more stuff. And so I have my Google set up. So it'll like turn on my fan. It'll turn on my TV, turn all that stuff off. But yeah, so automation systems, those are huge. We're going to talk about a lot of these specific terms, I think on the next episode, right? 
Yeah, part two. How do you specifically deal? One of the theories behind ADHD is that our brains don't produce enough dopamine. So what are some systems that you've created to help that dopamine seeking? Something that I do that makes me happier, I used to do, especially in school, like new notebook. Something new and fresh is like, I get to start over. So any of the errors I've made, any of the issues I had, any of the stuff I didn't like, I get this new, pretty, shiny thing. Oh, hey, it's a new vacuum. I'll probably vacuum more for a while because it's new. Like the, the novelty of new stuff, mm-hmm. granted, for stuff like a vacuum, I'm not going to go spend like $500 on a vacuum every couple months to keep it new for me. But would I vacuum more if I was able to do that? Yes. Yes, I would. Because I would be excited. Like I saw this steam cleaner on TikTok and I really flip and want to buy one. And they're not that expensive. But also I'm like, I'm going to use it for a couple months and then it will be put away and then I will never use it until who knows. So, but for me, novelty of like small things. Mm -hmm. I think can make a big difference. Or even I'd said I got a new phone. Well, Mm -hmm. literally I was transferring stuff and I was going to transfer all of my text messages. Do you know how exciting it is that I only have like four text message threads open or something? It's like, okay. (laughs) So I think that there's a, for me, that is like a huge dopamine thing. I get to start a new notebook. I get to start a new whatever. I have a brand, having that brand new something makes it exciting. So getting the new notebook means you're going to keep taking notes or you're going to keep like. Right. I'm like excited then to take notes for whatever, to keep notes in this or like we've, I think I've maybe mentioned it before, my bullet journaling because ADHD yeah. is like a thing. People are like, oh yeah, that new journal is really going to help. You have no idea how many journals I have bought and tried. We talked about like the middle school one. I mean, I have used every flipping notebook out there, all the yeah. So now I create my own. It's a creative outlet. Sometimes I get a little bored with it, but I can change it up all the time. But then it's like, I can start a new one. And it's just something, there's just a novelty. And I feel like that novelty is enough to have me be reinvigorated if it's something I have to do kind of that gets monotonous. Okay. Like, I'm like, I really want a new washer and dryer right now. I need a bigger one. The dryer is not as efficient. They're just old. They really are. They still work, but they're very old. And I'm like, I will be way more excited to do laundry probably for like six months if I have a new, nicer, bigger. Because also when we got them, it was just me and Dan. So we didn't get like extra large anything. And now I'm like, we have five people worth of laundry all the time. Like Probably about time for a new one. Totally. So for me, that's, I think, one of the huge mm-hmm. dopamine seeking. When I get a chance to like start new, start fresh. So what about you? How do you... What, what is like, gives you all the dopamine happies? You know, and so actually, I think one of the things I would do for a long time is actually supplement. So it actually take a whole lot of stimulants because I was yeah. trying to artificially increase that dopamine in my brain. I didn't know that's what I was doing. Go girl. See, you were doing it the right way. I have the biggest oh. sweet tooth on the planet. I mean, sugar is everybody's dopamine. Everybody, it doesn't matter what kind of brain you have. Yeah. But. So... But I don't, I haven't, I still haven't found like a good replacement for things like little video games or TikTok or little quick dopamine hits that are frivolous, you know? So oh, yeah, I think that's why I can watch TV. Mm-hmm. Is like doing, doing something with my hands, a craft or a little mini game on my phone. Mm-hmm. I can, en- I will enjoy a movie or a TV show way more if I'm doing something with my hands. Yeah, that makes sense. I think that's good. I think we covered a good amount of things that we do that we've developed to kind of cope with some of the issues that can arise from ADHD and the things that are normal to someone with that neuro, neurodivergent brain. So I think you want to take a short break and then maybe define some of the terms that these behaviors are fixing. Yes, except it's not going to be a short break. You're going to have to go listen to our next oh episode. Oh. Well, yeah, we're already done with this episode. So yeah. come back and listen because what David just described is exactly what we're going to be talking about to really give a name to some of those things that, that we deal with, that we've come up with these coping strategies, but we're going to get into like why and what it's actually titled in the neurodivergent world. Yeah. So come back for part two because it's really, there's we're just jam packing this with information and Hope that you are finding some value 
learning who you are. If you are someone who's not neurodivergent and you're resonating with some of the stuff that we're saying, like that's how I diagnosed myself was resonating with some things I heard. So it might be worth taking a second look. Might not mean anything. And it might mean something that could make a difference for you. So come or back. Or relate to someone else in your life that has the weird neurodivergent brain. Yes. If you are a neurotypical, absolutely. You definitely have people in your life who are neuro neurodivergent. You just do. We all do. We have neurodivergent. We got neurotypical. We got all the fluctuations. And so we want to give you all the info. So come back for part two. Thanks before, for listening. Before we end, should we say our secret word? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The secret word for this episode. Shenanigans. A shenanigans. Ooh, secret word is shenanigans. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah. What is that for? I don't know. We'll find out. <laughs> I don't know. We'll find out later, but we're going to randomly intersperse those. So be listening for the secret word. Okay. Bye. Thanks everybody. Good to see you. Thank you for listening. And hey, congrats for making it here. If you didn't happen to catch part one, just go back to the previous episode to get the full story. It was a really good one. If you enjoyed today's conversation, please consider liking, subscribing, and or reviewing us on wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, if there's someone you know who clearly doesn't know what the fuck they're doing and would benefit from this topic, please hit that share button and send them this episode. Let's normalize the feeling of uncertainty asking for help and admitting that we don't know what the fuck we're doing either. either.